Hey guys, Kurt from Time Machine Transport. Good morning. So this is, uh, I'm doing this video after I showed you guys um, that horrendous animal, savage, in the truck stop. But who does that, right? I mean, it's crazy. And it's like, uh, I think I'd rather see uh, two fat people having sex, I guess. It'd be like a fight. You know what I'm saying? Like when fat people fuck, they it's like two people fight. So, anyways, um, I wanted to do a video on not just the savage, um, but uh, so I, I have people that subscribers that you know ask me or whatever. Hey, Kurt, is now a good time to get into trucking? Um, you know, what can we expect on rates? Guys, I, I'm not the gospel on that. I, I've, we've done okay. Um, I won't brag. I won't jinx. Um, I've, we've done okay. Um, so here's the thing. Truckers, for the most part, from my, in my opinion, have no loyalty. Okay. Um, and that's quite apparent because um, you know, remember the, the Canada um, blockade? I wouldn't say a blockade, but the uh, the rally for truckers and can those cats stuck it out. I mean, for months, and uh, finally the government broke their back. So it it can happen, like truckers forming and rallying. Um, and, and the public would be behind us, the citizens, right? But here's the thing. Truckers don't have loyalty. The, and not all of them. I mean, I know the people that watch this channel are loyal um, as truckers. Or, or even if you're not a trucker, I'm sure you're loyal to your job. Um, so, I don't know how to say this. If, um, uh, if you look on the debt board, or, or a truck stop or anything like that, right? Um, you will see, if, if you know anything about trucking, and, I, and I've learned, I've, I've definitely cut my teeth on and a lot in trucking. I know nobody took me under their wing and was like, here, Kurt, this is how you do it. I, I've kind of really learned the hard way, um, but, but I, I prefer that way. I know that sounds ridiculous, right? Um, and, and that kind of goes says, okay, that sounds ridiculous. Like, you know, I broke my teeth or, I, you know, I cut my teeth in, uh, um, in real estate when I, when I was doing flipped properties, um, and a preacher with nine kids, Ernie Eubanks, I'll never forget this guy. He screwed me for 55,000 and my partner, my ex-partner, well, I, we were kind of sort of partners. Um, I'll have to tell you the time that my, uh, real estate partner was actually on America's Most Wanted, Caesar Lira, L-I-R-A, Caesar, and is like the, the, uh, the emperor of Rome, Caesar, um, which I, I don't know if he's a Caesar or Caesar, anyways, um, he went by Caesar, so, back to the point, Kurt, um, that, that, so that doesn't really make sense that I would, I, I'm, grateful for um, cutting my teeth you know on trucking the hard way um, but but that it, it goes like this I, I mean if you're if you're looking on that board and you're not paying attention to the rates brokers have between seven and 14 days to move that freight so the brokers are smart and the truck drivers are stupid because the truck drivers they're so impatient, they're so absolutely imp impatient that they don't want to sit at a truck stop and wait for a load or, or wait till their 10 hours is up, whatever the case is. They want to boogie down the road, constantly boogie, 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 boogie. Um, but that's not, you know, so success is not, um, Success is not judged by a stopwatch. Success is judged by a Rolex. And that's a curdology for you. Um, 
because you shouldn't be that rushed where you're just taking freight to move. That that the, shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. So the brokers are smart and drivers are stupid because they'll post that load for the bottom, the, the, the least they possibly can, 48 cents a mile. I've seen it, 37 cents a mile, that's crazy. That is probably the very first day or maybe the second day that they post that load. Now, the shippers and the receivers deal with a lot of these brokers, specific brokers, uh, for the most part, and brokers, you know, they bid on these loads, just like we bid on the loads to move them for our mile rate. Now, as the days tick off, it's kind of like your 70 hour clock. You start with 70 hours and every day comes off of that 70 hours. So you're getting down to zero and you gotta do a 34 hour restart, right? Or reset, whatever you wanna call it. So the first day, it's garbage. Second day, garbage. Third day, maybe garbage, maybe a little better. Fourth day, it's getting a little better. Fifth, definitely getting better. Six, seven. Now, if it's seven days to move that load on that sixth day, they got that load posted for three dollars a mile, two fifty a mile. And here's the thing, guys: you're still making money. And I know this. I, I you guys have seen my video. I, I, I used to not be a man of principles, um, but I, I have changed my ways since I was younger. Um, and people can testify to that. Um, so, if you get a load. For a dollar a mile, well, I mean, if it's a partial, I mean, honestly, I've hauled cheap freight in the past. I'm not going to lie to you, but that's because I didn't know any better. I would rather deadhead 900 miles plus just to get to the shop, to get to the Midwest where the loads are better. And so, you know, it, 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 it goes like this. If you don't have principles or morals or ethics you are you're you're you're, you're a pos in, in my opinion and i used to be a pos because i was that person right um so the thing is is this if you if you get a load for a dollar a mile believe it or not you will still make money i know that sounds that but it's simple math guys so we'll use you know, and here's another thing. I'll get to that. So, if you do a dollar a mile, okay, well, if your fuel costs you, say your truck's getting six miles to the gallon, which the way these knuckleheads are flying down the road here, I mean, these cats are doing 75, 80 miles an hour. I can, I can go that fast. But you're getting more stress. You're spending more money. It's more wear and tear on your equipment. Yada, yada, so on. I mean, there's only negatives that come from speed. Accidents causes speed. Deaths causes speed. You know what I'm saying? Fatigue causes speed. All this stuff is caused by speed. Um, so if you're, um, I gotta go to this job site in uh, Shell, Wyoming. I'm hauling this, uh, these three pieces of pipe. Um, so uh, so I, I put this a, my GPS on my truck, the GPS wouldn't come up, so I verified everything this morning after I took a sure manure, um, just to make sure that I wasn't taking like a car route to go into Shell, Wyoming, because that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, so, so my GPS is talking to me. Um, so back to the point, Kurt. So if you're doing a dollar a mile, and your truck is getting six miles to the gallon, that means you're, and, and let's, we're gonna do simple math here because I'm not that bright. So we're gonna do simple math. So you're gonna get for that one fuel, by well, one gallon of fuel, and, and I hate when, when drivers say gas, I gotta stop for gas, right AB? My boy AB, been trucking for a while and he still says gotta stop for gas. That shit irks me. You wanna talk about being Kurt with Kurt? That irks me. So say a gallon of fuel is $4, okay? On a, with our fuel discount, we're paying way under that. Thank God for OTR. And if you don't have a factor company, call OTR and tell them that Kurt from Time Machine Transport sent you. So, um, 
So if, you, if you're doing a dollar a mile, that's $6. So my truck's getting about six, six and a half because I've cut my speed way down to 65. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And these cats are flying by me doing 75, 80 miles an hour like like the like a speed like somebody's chasing them. Literally it's like somebody's they're checking the mirrors. I mean they are literally going down the road checking the mirrors. Cause it looks like somebody it, it looks like somebody is chasing them the way they're driving. I've had guys, not too many gals, but guys that will literally pass me at 75, 80, get in my lane and then get off at the exit. How, how much sense does that make? I mean, it's like the speed limit is, the signs are just a suggestion. Well, we think you should do 75 or 80, but you can do 90 if you want. That That's just asinine to me. And then you, these guys and gals call themselves professional drivers, right? Mm. I would take the professional out of there. Um, so if you're doing a dollar a mile and fuels cost you just say $4 for simple math. So for every gallon of fuel, you're making $2, okay? Because if you're doing a dollar a mile and you're six miles in a gallon, that's $6 minus your four. Now, I'm not telling you to, to take a load for a dollar. If you take a load for a dollar a mile, then bless your heart. <laughs> you are special. Um, and like I said, I've, I've taken cheap freight in the past, but that's because I didn't know any better. So, um, you know, it, it's, so these brokers, every single day it, that load board sits on there, the price goes up. And it's quite apparent because I've, I took some screenshots. Just go on load board if you're just sitting at the truck stop, whatever the case is. And you'll see the ones that are po on that board. You'll see the ones that are posted with the, with the mile amount, right? Now, if you're if anything over two dollars a mile, you're gonna make money, okay? And, and and this is the thing about truckers, they don't want to have more than five thousand pounds on their deck or in the box. They don't want a deadhead. They want to go right around the corner for the pickup. They want to be able to unload twenty four hours a day and not sit in docks. You know what I'm saying? It's like truckers just want the easy way to to go, and that's not that's not good. Um, so if you're doing $2 a mile, you're still making money. Why? Because on that six, six miles to the gallon, that's $12, right? Well, if fuel's costing us under $4, I'll just say $4. And of course that's gross, right? You still got to pay Uncle Sam. But here's the thing. Once you have more write-offs, um, you don't pay Uncle Sam as much taxes. Okay. So for the people that are asking me, Hey, Kurt, is now a good time to get into trucking? I look at it like this. The amount of trucks, so COVID was like the boom in trucking, right? Because no, you know, people needed freight, people needed PPE, people needed this, people needed that, and people were afraid to go out. So truckers made some decent money during COVID, period, they did. And now, every, you know, so you had so many drivers and so many trucks out there that the freight was out there and people were covering it because they needed drivers. They needed loads moved, right? So it's either one of two things. Either one, the economy has really taken a shit that bad. Or two, there's just too many drivers in the industry, too many trucks, and they don't have the freight to cover, or the trucks to cover the freight. You know, or they don't have the freight to cover the trucks, okay? if that makes sense. So, I don't know if you guys know the old story. Well, the, the, the tortoise and the hare, right? So the tortoise and hare take off at this race. And the, the hare, which is a rabbit, if you don't know what a hare is, um, it's fast, right? And what is a turtle or the tortoise? It's slow. It's just taking its time, right? Well, the, more, the, the, the final part of the story is the turtle wins the race because the the hare, the rabbit, is so exhausted and so tired and just constantly on the go that it just poops out and the tortoise wins, right? Um, so that that's that's like, you know, an analogy of trucking. If you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be that hare and you're screaming down the road every minute of every day, you're eventually you're gonna get tired. You're gonna cause an accident. You're gonna get burnt out. Your equipment's gonna break down. You know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna be an unsafe carrier, whatever the case is. So that that's how that works, right? And, and also, you know, another thing like, you know, the 
if you're taking that freight for a dollar a mile or less even, you know, it's like, okay, I want, I want to do, I want to do more work for less money. I want to do way more work than for lay, for way less money. That's some shit nobody ever fucking said. Nobody ever said that. And if you did, <laughs> bless your heart, <laughs> bless your heart. Um, but people just don't say that. I want to work way harder and way more to get less money. So the longer you let these these loads sit on the load board, then the the higher they will go. But you have to be patient. You have to put the work in. You got to be able to deadhead. You got to be able to, you know, wait on loads, whatever the case is. And if everybody did that, then the rates they they would they would get the hint like, damn, we can't post this at you know dog shit rates, right? Um, we can only um, do good mile rates, right? The mouth is getting dry. Um, so. That's that's where where we're at on that. So when you guys you guys don't have to take cheap freight. If you sit there in that truck stop or you sit there wherever you are, and if everybody's doing that, the rates will go up. But remember, you are still making money at a dollar a mile. And the way that these guys and gals are flying, well, not gals so much, but the way these guys are flying down the road in these newer trucks, older trucks, whatever the case is, they're probably only getting six miles to the gallon, like my old truck, right? But I've I've been, I mean, I have saved hundreds of dollars a week. We have saved hundreds of dollars. I mean, a lot of money. So that's making up for your, for your, you know, your, your rate, your, your mile rate. The slower you go, the less fuel your truck consumes. So you're better off regardless, safer, you're less fatigued, more, you know, it, it's like if you go slower, you'll watch your wallet grower. <laughs> if you go slow, you'll watch your wallet grow. All right. So I'm going to fuck this dude's truck up right here. Chuck. It wasn't me. Probably one of the fast track motherfuckers that going down the road, right? Or maybe it's him. Maybe, or maybe a trailer backed into him, right? I don't know. Not my business. So. The, the point of the video is to follow up the savage that I saw on the truck stop at three this morning. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. So like I said, don't take a dollar per mile rent freight. You will make money. You're going to be out there longer and you're not going to make as much money. And if you do, you're, you're just slitting your own throat, uh, for the future because, you know, and, and and that was part of my reason for saying truckers are not loyal because there are drivers out there that are just pouncing on these loads. So shame on you, right? And also you have, um, I was going to say so. Oh, so, so again, with the loyal truckers, how loyal are they? Remember the so-called um, uh, boycott or trucker convoy that went to D.C. and then went, you know, then they were boycotting New York and then they weren't going down to Texas. That lasted a half a day. <laughs> so if you guys and gals aren't going to stand up for yourselves for better rates and whatever the case is, do you really think that they're going to sit and not get paid by boycotting a state or a city? No, they're not. They're, they're not going to do it. I would do it, but I'll be the only fucking knucklehead out there with a, you know, Fucking, I, I'm a dummy sign, right? I'd be wearing a dunce cap because nobody else would be with me. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you, like I said, so I just wanted to answer uh, some questions about the trucking industry. And like I said, I am not the gospel, but we've done okay in trucking. And we, I mean, I, I built this, and not like I'm a big company, not, but I'm very proud of Time Machine Transport, you know, and I'm and my wife helped me, you know what I'm saying? So... I'm very proud. I'm very fortunate to have such a beautiful wife, caring, loving, giving. I love you, baby girl. Hi, good morning. Anyways, I got to go thump my tires. And uh, if you guys got any questions or complaints, <laughs> you can call my customer service department. It's 414-477-7845. Again, that's Kurt, 
414-477-7845. That is my number and that is the complaint department. Anyways, I hope this video finds you well. I got to get on down the road after I thump my tires. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Ciao.